Hello, and welcome to This is USG, a video podcast by the universities at Shady Grove. Nine universities, one campus, great results. I'm Ann Kadimian, Executive Director of the Universities at Shady Grove. A key challenge for students graduating from college is to be career ready. In addition to the knowledge they acquire for their degree expertise, it's really important that students have the tools and the insight and the experience to hit the ground running and to succeed in their first job. Tonight, we will learn about how USG helps to prepare students for success through career readiness training. A perfect example is the CEO or Career Experiential Opportunities Program that has been developed through ACES, which is Achieving Collegiate Excellence and Success. Our guest tonight will bring this program to life from visionary leadership to student experience and success. Our first guest is Sarah Wells. She's the ACES Career Readiness Manager at USG. Sarah, welcome. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Our next guest is Charles Hess. He's the co-owner of Cooper Building Services and a member of the USG Board of Advisors. Funding to launch this initiative was made possible through a generous gift by the Hess Family Foundation as well. Chuck, welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And our final guest tonight is Joy Aday, a UMB nursing student at USG. Joy, welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Um, Sarah, I wonder if we can start with you. Um, career readiness, you know, uh, it sounds like an obvious outcome for any college graduate, but maybe not so. Tell us what career readiness looks like and how is USG trying to address career readiness in general? Yes, so career readiness in the context of our work at USG is really a measure of how prepared a student is to meet the needs of our employers in our region. Uh, this measure of preparedness typically includes technical skills that vary by industry. So for example, Joy in nursing would need to know about basic life support, or if you're in STEM, you would might need to know about cell cultures or statistical analysis. And those things are very industry specific. Um, and our academic partners do a fantastic job of preparing our students with those skills. Um, however, in student affairs, we also think about some of these other pieces that often are uh, viewed as uh, students get these skills by proxy of having a bachelor's degree. And these are what you may have heard over the years termed as soft skills. We refer to them in USG as the nine skills for career success. And they refer to really critical skills that actually make a student ready to do the work regardless of industry. Uh, so things like communication, critical thinking and problem solving, professionalism, digital technology, leadership, teamwork, and diversity. And we didn't arrive at these through guesswork. These are research-based. We've done a lot of collaboration with the National Association of Colleges and Employers on this work, as well as a lot of our own research. And so we have found that we really need to prepare our graduates with these overarching skills so that they can meet the needs of employers when they graduate, because if not, we're looking at underemployment. And I really got in, invested in this when I was a, a young 20 something. I uh, found myself taking a different career path than a lot of my peers. And I realized it was because of a formative internship where I learned these skills. Um, and so for me, it's incredibly important and for us at USG, it's incredibly important to prepare students with these career skills so that their first job out of college isn't an underemployed job. You know, a person with a bachelor's degree working as a barista or in sales, which are wonderful opportunities, but not what their degrees prepared them for. Because what research shows is that if you start underemployed, you will stay underemployed and that will impact your long-term earning potential. And so for us, career readiness is really about setting every graduate who comes from a program at USG with the same competitive skills to get the best opportunities in our workforce. Sarah, that's a terrific yeah. overview of these challenges. I, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more specifically about the CEO program, if you could cue that up for us as well. That'd be great. Absolutely. So thank you. Thanks to a generous philanthropic donation from the Hess Family Foundation, we were able to take a look at what would it take to improve career readiness for students, particularly those we wanted to look at those that were most at need, those that didn't come with a ready-made network of opportunities. So we were looking at students who were primarily first in their family to go to college and who might have other barriers to college and career success. And so we had a population of students that was already being served through a program called Achieving Collegiate Excellence and Success or ACEs that really looks to, it started out really to look at educational 
um, equity in our county and to look at those students who were perhaps um, more at risk of not achieving educational equity as far as, uh, far as a, um, a bachelor's degree. And so we took a hundred of students from that uh, program and we started in high school. And so what I think is so unique about that particular philanthropic, philanthropic work is that it wasn't just charity. It was to see what would be different for those students if we worked with them early and often on career readiness skills. If we helped them to identify the path that, that met uh, their skill sets, we helped them to prepare through coaching, through hands-on interactive training on these really key career competencies and through formative career experiences with our regional business community. And if we did this in a progressive way so that uh, the level of challenge was upped every year from senior year of high school to freshman year of college and so on. And so we, we got 100 students from ACES. We didn't select them based on GPA. We didn't select high flyers. They're very representative of the broader group of ACES. So we had students who had to take a lot of developmental coursework all the way to students who were in the high flyer range, which is very representative of ACES. And those students soared. What we saw uh, was in that initial population, they uh, pr proceeded and uh, earned bachelor, or excuse me, earned associate's degrees at higher rates than their, than their peers who were not in the pilot. Uh, they had higher GPAs, higher uh, reports of career experiences with regional business partners, um, and were more engaged in general um, than, our, uh, than their peers. And so we figured out this was a really great potential for all of our students. And so now we're really grateful that we've been able to expand some of those best practices. And so we're talking 100 students, which is a small little pilot of ACES. And to give you a perspective, ACES serves 2,500 students annually from MCPS to MC to USG, achieving uh, educational equity. Now we serve all of those students with these same career readiness principles, thanks to the Hess Family Foundation for allowing us to try it out with 100 and see how successful it was. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, what a great model. And what a great segue into uh, talking with Chuck about, Chuck, what was your, what was your inspiration for doing this? You, listening to Sarah, this has been such a success and um, ha accomplishes so many important goals. From a, from a philanthropic per perspective, you know, thinking about ways to make an impact on your community, what drew you to this particular um, area to to make a difference in what what was your motivation for that and vision well and it really it wasn't just philanthropic i mean uh, you know i've always had interest in in education but particularly how it impacts our business and other businesses you know i've served on different boards uh, i've served on the virginia foundation for community college education and different schools their boards and also uh, identity here in, in uh, Montgomery County with the latino community um you know, young people really are the sustaining lifeblood of any organization. Um, and as you and Sarah know, you know, working with young people is just, it's a lot of fun. And they bring a whole different dynamic to, to any organization. Um, when we first approached uh, USG about a proposal, I think it was back, uh, Sarah, probably, what, 2013 or so, mm -hmm. um, it was really just a concept. Uh, we did not really know specifically what the needs were or certainly had to address them. So we really came up with just three criteria which we shared with uh, with uh, Sarah and um, the, everyone over there working on the program. You know, the, our criteria was we wanted a program that followed the MCPS, MC, USG academic pathway. We thought there was a real alignment in the missions and that, and that was important. Um, you know, secondly, you know, we, we really wanted a program that would be substantive, that would really be an acute need in the, in the community. Um, and very important, thirdly, uh, we wanted uh, measured results. We wanted metrics. And I have to tell you, I mean, we're thrilled with the, with the program. Um, uh, what Sarah has done over there has far exceeded our, our expectations. So we're really, really happy with it. That's fantastic. Um, and, and the emphasis on metrics is so important as well. I know this program has really taken that emphasis on metrics to a new level in terms of being able to demonstrate its success and hold everyone accountable for, for success as well. So great set of criteria for moving that forward. Um, Joy, I wonder if you could jump in here. You know, you're a very busy student. I know you're a nursing student. I know you have a lot of other responsibilities at USG as well. Um, tell us about how career readiness, uh, you know, how you've, what kind of um, 
what kind of experiences you've had with the career readiness program. How has it helped you in your preparation for your nursing career, for example? Tell us a little bit about your engagement with career readiness at USG. Yeah, I'll be happy to. Um, so I became a part of you know, ACS as CEO, I believe, um, during my sophomore and junior, junior year um, at Clarksburg High School. Um, and so it became a huge part of my academic journey um, when I transitioned to Montgomery College um, and eventually until I graduate this coming um, spring or May of 21. And so through, throughout my years um, as a CEO and ACES student, I have gained so much insight, you know, to become career ready by graduation. And that's the whole purpose and vision of CEO. Um, and so, you know, thankfully with, you know, during my third time, um, you know, thanks before it was Miss Wells, but, you know, eventually it became um, the responsibility um, went to Melissa Herrera and Jessica Diaz, but they would send an array of emails to students um, in terms of, you know, helping students become ready um, by sending them like scholarship applications or links to internships um, or even job shadowing opportunities or one-to-one -one coaching sessions. I mean, there was an array of, of ways to be involved really. Um, and so, you know, I was able to really utilize all the resources that was sent to us. And, um, you know, like you mentioned, being in such a competitive and rigorous program, like the University of Maryland Baltimore Nursing, um, they're very key on the practical preparations. And so I never really realized um, how much the career support and, uh, and academic coaching that I really needed until, you know, attending those workshops or attending, you know, the, the various key things that was necessary for me to really transition. You know, I saw that measure and I was able to really shape my critical and clinical thinking skills. And, you know, it's all thanks to the career coaches and, you know, you know, what ACES and CEO has really brought to my life. And so I can attest to really saying that attending those workshops um, that really focused on, you know, like resume writings or cover letters or, you know, time management skills um, or LinkedIn profiles or e-portfolios. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, but my favorite was, you know, what Ms. Wells really led was how to apply for graduate school. Um, and so just being a part of also three major like job shadowing opportunities, um, like shadowing a manager, um, of special projects, um, business engagement and career experience um, initiatives at a burn center in Washington, D.C., um, or even shadowing a nurse resident care director at, um, at a, um, an assisted living facility in Bethesda, um, or even my favorite job shadowing of all, which was um, shadowing various nurses at um, Shady Group Adventist. They gave us a whole tour of you know, the hospital and we got to really see what was going on behind the scenes in an operating room. And eventually I saw myself being on the med surgery unit during my clinical rotation um, at Shady River Adventist. And so in addition to you know, all of this, I was able to really sign up for like a mock interview with um, a career coach of mine, Melissa Herrera. And we were able to, she was able to really guide and provide that framework for me, um, you know, just to secure my, um, to secure my current clinical scholars position um, at the University of Maryland Medical Center. And so um, I will be starting in March um, as a practicum as a practicum scholar and eventually transition to become a new graduate nurse on the intermediate care unit. And so, you know, they have been such a huge blessing in my life. And so, you know, thankfully I can say that I can come out of, you know, University of Maryland, Baltimore with a job secured and, you know, with the salary already in place. Um, and so, you know, aside from, you know, thanking my heavenly father, I can also give a huge part of my success. I really thank, you know, Mr. Hess and the Hess Foundation and Melissa and Sarah and all Miss Walls and also Jessica for really guiding and prepping me to become career ready by the end of graduation. Yeah, I think, you know, Joy, that's a, that's a great, um, story of how this has inspired you and, and assisted you along the way. You know, I think one of the components of this that USG does so well is the focus on leadership in particular and leadership as a career ready component. And, you know, just knowing you and the things that you're doing at USG, I can see that that's been a really um, important part of your development as well. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I mean, how has the specifically the leadership piece helped you think about your career? Definitely. Um, for me, I knew that I wanted more than just to attend school. Um, I wanted more on my resume than just seeing University of Maryland Baltimore. And so, you know, having those 
practical skills being shaped by you know coaches who can really see your potentials because oftentimes when we think about ourselves we never think highly of ourselves and so we have you know academic coaches who can really see our key potential and to really guide and prep us you know through every step of the way and so I know for me with my leadership positions um, it was truly like the guidance and and all the workshops combined um, for me to really practice because me practice makes perfect and so I was really able to utilize all the skills that were taught to me from high school until now to really figure out how can I be a leader for other students how can I help guide other students and um, how can I utilize all that I've learned you know for other people who come to me saying hey can you help me with the resume writing or can you look over my cover letter um, or can you even help me prep for mock interviews it's like I've been there um, and so I can, it, like, I can be able to be a guide for other students. And that's, that's just what, you know, CEOs really taught me over the years that I'm now able to do for other students. And, you know, I, I'm just very grateful for all they've done for me. And, you know, this, I don't know. Yeah, no, that's I'm very grateful. That's great. I love the way you're thinking about leadership in the context of supporting other students as well and their success. That's fantastic. That's great. That's yeah, so cool. Um, Sarah, can you tell, talk a little bit about, you have this amazing pilot, the CEO program, and now I know we're talking about career readiness at a much larger scale. You hinted at that with working with Montgomery County Public Schools and working with Montgomery College, and I know, Chuck, this is part of your vision, that it, that it be comprehensive in that sense. So, Sarah, how has CEO helped kind of set the groundwork for, for what's happening, it's going to be happening at a much larger scale now as well? What, what what are, what, what are the most the, the lessons that we take from the CEO program that have really helped us expand this um, and, and we'll be growing it bigger over time as well? Yeah, so we've always been focused on changing the broader conversation about career readiness. And I think that's why I was so drawn to come to USG. I came to USG to work on the HESS project, essentially. That's what drew me to this campus. Now, there's so much more that has had me stay, um, but I just, I realized this was bigger than helping a population of students, though we really did that. And you can see that now in students graduating into a, a tough economy with job placements. Um, but we wanted to do something more. And so I'm proud to say that our student affairs division at USG is now engaging in a competency campaign for all of our students um, and helping students at USG in any program now to really self-assess their level of career readiness and for them to tie into programming. It's just like uh, Joy said, a lot of times you might think, I don't need to do these extra things, or I am too busy already. I have to work a couple of jobs. I have to help pay for rent. I have to do all these things. Why should I also engage civically? Why should I be involved? Why should I, I do this? And what we're trying to do is make the case for, hey, we know the formula. We know what employers are going to ask you when you get into that job interview. We know what, what you're going to have to demonstrate. So let us point you in the right direction to develop the skills so that you can have the confidence in the one of, because you only really have two kind of auditions with these employers, your resume, your interview, and it's all those formative experiences that you can draw from and speak to your story, your narrative, your personal brand that let you get your foot in the door. I think Mr. Hess always says this. He says, it's what we did is just give the students confidence. We let them try and fail and try again. And we gave them safe places. We gave them safe spaces with employers. You know, not, I, I never got to go to take your daughter to work day or take your child to work day. I didn't know what a professional workplace um, looked like and neither do many of our students. So we're giving them a safe place to explore work environments. We're giving them a safe place to do that. But what's really great is, and I think what we got to do uniquely with the HESS pilot is start early and make it progressive, follow them through. And so our model now has been leveraged and adopted um, for a STEM degree pipeline that's being developed in partnership with MCPS, MC, USG, and UMBC. Um, it's, a, it's a model that works. We're showing that it works. And I think that's the other thing is uh, Mr. Hess challenged us from day one, show me that it works or we're, you know, this isn't, this wasn't worth it. And so we had to really look and find the evidence and then change things. If something wasn't working, let's change the way we reach students. Let's, let's be more flexible in our format or let's, you know, let's be more student focused. And so in general, I would say, you know, what we're seeing is that this model that we've proven works, it's also scalable. Um, we're scaling it all across ACES and now we're scaling it beyond ACES students. Um, and so, cause at the end of the day, 
every student needs this. Whether you are a student who had access to every advantage in the world, you could still be in that underemployed pool because you didn't get that chance to focus on these skills. And so ultimately that's what we wanna do was we wanna have this on the tips of every educator's tongue in Montgomery County and maybe more broadly. So, and it's a conversation that's happening nationally as well. Well, I can tell you as someone stepping out of graduate school, even I would have, I would have appreciated, um, you know, way back when I would have appreciated very much this kind of experience and opportunity. Um, Chuck, listening to Sarah and Joy talk, this is so exciting. I mean, you, your, your approach to this was let's build a model, let's be, make it evidence-based, let's make sure it works. And how exciting to see this grow now and scale and to be so successful um, and to, you know, it's going to, it's going to take off in a lot of ways in a lot of different areas. I wonder if you could think back to when you first start, you know, started thinking about this program and what was needed, what stood out for you as you were seeing new students come out into the workforce, um, you know, students maybe working in your, in your own firm, what stood out for you as a gap or an area that needed to be addressed? And, and what, what gave you the idea to think about career readiness as a way to address these problems? Well, really, it was the realization um, uh, of, the, of the advantages that some students had that others didn't that really kind of initiated our discussion with USJ. Um, at, at our company, we had a program where uh, we would bring in um, a class of summer interns. Um, they, we, we would assign them to a team. They would have real responsibilities uh, on that team for, for the success of the project while the time they were there. Um, and then uh, typically they would always, we had students between their junior and senior year in, in, uh, in college, uh, typically majoring in architecture, engineering, or construction management. Uh, and at the end of the summer, we, we had them do a presentation to senior management of, you know, what did they learn? Um, what were some of the lessons they got out of it? And uh, some of them did very well. Some of them, you know, obviously not so well. And then obviously we would make uh, job offers to the students from that, from that class. Um, yeah, unfortunately, and for a, a myriad of reasons, there are students that don't have access to that type of program. Um, and so that really was, you know, well, but I know the CEO was addressing these things. What the great thing about CEO is they're addressing so many things way beyond anything that we ever even thought of incorporating in our internship program. So it's, it's really, really impressed. And uh, the, uh, we, we got into is, is a pilot program, but I'll tell you what was really impressive. We would meet with them, uh, Sarah and uh, uh, Robin and, and so forth, I think twice a year. And, and certainly you have a much more detailed uh, meeting at the end of each year. And they would explain what they did, you know, what worked, what didn't work, what they improved. Every year they improved that, that, uh, that program. So after a four or five year program, you know, they, they had it nailed. They knew exactly how it worked. And then surprisingly, they've gone well beyond that and come up with all, all new types of aspects for it. So, and the scaling of it is just really, really satisfying that uh, this program can be scaled both in itself but also in applications elsewhere. So very happy. Great sure. job. Yeah, no, terrific. That's a great story to see that evolution from direct experience with students uh, in, in, in the internship programs to this model. That's fantastic. Um, and what a collaboration to develop it as well. What a fantastic collaboration. Yeah. Um, so Joy, I think you're getting ready to graduate. Is that right? In April, will you be graduating? Congratulations. Uh, that is congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Fan fantastic. Um, what, what advice would you have for students who are following, you know, path, you know, on their way to a degree, to get earning their degree, just starting out their degree programs? What advice would you have for them about, about the career readiness opportunities? How, how, would, you, how would you advise them about um, the best way to maximize their opportunities here? Oh, my goodness. That's, you know, that's a plethora of advice I could honestly list for students who are really going through the process of, um, you know, getting ready for school um, or even thinking of going back to school after not going to school for a while. Um, but, you know, my main, you know, advice for students is really that whatever that they're going through, you know, I tell myself it's just seasonal, it's just temporary. So you got to seize the moment, you got to seize the opportunities that you're given because it's not always going to be provided for you. You know, we're not always going to be in USG, um, you know, for 
it's just such a short period of time. And so for me, just like how I wanted to utilize um, or to join as many clubs and organizations as I could, um, you know, I would want students to really think about starting their, well, just starting to become career ready as early as they can. For me, I was thankful enough to start in high school. And so, you know, it's never too late for students to really, to really utilize all the resources that are given to them, you know, at USG or even at Montgomery College um, or beyond, um, because I can really measure and see, you know, like Ms. Wells talked about, the growth and the confidence that I've gained or acquired over the, you know, the past few years that I've been in ACES and CEO. And I honestly can't imagine my life, you know, without, um, you know, without being or without having my application selected, or if I hadn't been in workshops or had joined um, opportunities and job shadowing or internships or anything like that. And so I would really urge students that, you know, just to figure out ways that they can realize or utilize all the workshops that are really provided, you know, virtually and it's free too. And so, um, you know, they're really being taught by faculty and staff who have the knowledge of what it's like outside the workforce, um, because we know that it's very competitive out there right now, you know, post-graduation, especially, you know, in such a chaotic and unprecedented, unprecedented time that we currently live in. And so having the opportunity to really start now to really build in their career competency skills necessary for hire is just so critical and so crucial. And, um, you know, I can't, I can't thank being in this program enough because I can also emphasize that it's really important. And I gained this from ACES and CEO as well to really create smart goals um, ahead of time before the semester starts to really map out where students see themselves, where are they trying to go short-term or even long-term and to really reflect on their growth and their progress over time um, because that would really help them realize, am I reaching my goal? Do I really need to seek support? And there's always support out there. You know, I would also tell students, like there are also mentors and advisors willing to have mentees. Um, and so even if it's, in your academic program or even outside, you know, finding these mentors really helps them get to know you better, help them get to see your potential, get to see how much you're worth and really helps to really guide you on, you know, how far you can go in life. And so I would just tell students that, you know, life is only harder if they don't reach for help. Um, and so just think for them to utilize all their resources provided for them, um, you know, like I did, were really, you know, the sky would definitely be their limit as, as to how far they would see themselves really thrive in success. And I mean, I'm a living testimony. And so, you know, if it worked for me, it can definitely work for them. That's, that's great advice. Absolutely fantastic advice. Um, I'm going to ask you all to reflect a little bit on career readiness and the circumstances we're living in right now at this time. And Joy, you highlighted this you know, COVID, the economic challenges, you know, we're, we're looking hard at systemic racism. You know, there are a lot of challenges that we're facing now. And I'm wondering how the career readiness program kind of fits into these challenges. And, you know, Chuck is a member of our board of advisors, you know, which is one of the most amazing board of advisors I've ever seen, just remarkable. And thank you so much for your service on the board of advisors. As a member of the Board of Advisors, as a as a you know as a leader in the construction industry, how, do you see career readiness changing? Do you see what what kind of challenges do you see about people coming into the workforce during this time? Um, you know, what are what what kinds are we looking for new skills or is it more of a, a readiness? What, what how do you see the times and career readiness now from your perspective, from your vantage point? Uh, and it's it's you know it's really been really been difficult, um, much less for our industry than for like the hospitality and restaurants, obviously. But um, you know, we, when we first got started with the uh, pandemic, we we're all working remotely, we we're all doing Zoom, and uh, we use Microsoft Teams and so forth. Uh, and I said, you know, this is working. This is working pretty well. It's working. You know, we're still getting things done, and so forth. Um, you know, six months into it, we recognized that it really wasn't working as well as, as we thought it was. That, you know, you didn't have the interaction, we didn't have the teamwork. Um, there was, things were just not as efficient 
as when we were able to work together, get together in a conference room, get together in a workstation and work there. So that's, that's really been the realization in the last three or four months that, you know, it's not as great as we thought it was. Um, so obviously we're anxious to get back to the office. Um, uh, but what does it mean going forward? You know, obviously um, there are some benefits to the uh, learning how to work some remotely. So we'll all continue to incorporate that. Um, but hopefully it's not going to be the primary uh, way we interact anymore. Yeah. Sarah, yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think the challenge is teaching students, even in this difficult time, to make themselves essential um, and to learn to tell their story in a different way. Uh, I think one of the, the greatest things that I've learned through this career readiness work is that what employers don't want is a student who needs a syllabus because an employer isn't going to give you one. Um, they're going to give you problems to solve and outcome measures to meet, and they expect you to hit the ground running and think and figure out how to do that. And this is all the more difficult right now. And so I think what we are really trying to do is, is teach our students to be uh, flexible, creative, critical thinkers, um, and to be ready to be exactly what it is that that employer needs and to understand how to think like a hiring manager in a time like this um, and to understand how to develop uh, side skills and credentials and, you know, just whether it's a side hustle, but to, uh, to develop extra skills that make them all the more valuable. And so, you know, it's tough. Um, I think, though, the, the more we prep students to hit a, a, a tough period like this and still compete in this job market, the better off we're going to be when we're back to some sort of a normal. And it, and it hits into what you were talking about with, with systemic racism. It is just what you said. It's systemic. It is built into our, our society and the different opportunities that students are given from birth. Um, and so, you know, what we're trying to do is catch some students up who should have never been behind in the first place. And I think, you know, the, the more strategies we can give students to attack the job market in this pandemic, the better off they're gonna be when it's over um, because everybody needs creative critical thinkers, so. Yeah, it's particularly in, impacting, as you said, Sarah, the, the, the uh, people just coming into the workforce uh, because, you know, every, every company has a culture, every organization has a culture. So trying to acclimate new people into a, a, uh, an organization without having face-to-face -face interaction, it's really proved to be very problematic and, and difficult for the, for the young person coming in, knowing where they fit in this organization. I will, if I can add one thing, um, Dr. Kadamian, is that we're, we're also trying to help our regional business community to see ways that they can engage our students virtually. So that's another thing that we are working on. We're working on building out models for virtual internships um, to try to make it easier. You know, there are employers that would say, I still want to engage uh, my local younger workforce, but I don't know how you do that. I've never hosted a hybrid internship or I've never had somebody do project-based work for me virtually. We're trying to give them the tools um, to be able to do that that are more off the shelf. Um, because at the end of the day, it's not the regional workforce's job to hire somebody who's underskilled. I, we don't want you to subsidize employment for a low-skilled graduate who doesn't have what you need. But what we would love for you to help us with is to invest in the preparation of our local talent who are diverse and who are talented and smart and who can solve your problems. Help us develop them younger um, with some of these formative experiences so they'll be, they won't be underskilled. Um, and so that's another thing that we're doing is trying to, trying to help make that a little more accessible for our regional workforce. So it's, it's tough. Um, I can't wait to be back. I, I miss my office. I've got too many five-year-olds jumping into my zoom calls. So I'm <laughs> ready for that to be over. Um, but uh, I don't have that problem. Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> but we will, you know, we, we will soldier on and we will continue to support our students. I have to say, it's amazing. We had our, have some of our strongest engagement ever since we've switched to a virtual format. Doesn't mean that it's the right way to go. Um, but we've learned some things that's made that has made us more nimble. That's fantastic. 
Joy, I'm going to give you the last word here. If you want to, do you have any reflections on this time and, you know, the challenges of our immediate moment and thinking about your career? Are there things maybe you're, you've taken from this time of, you know, working our way through, you know, being a nursing student through the COVID pandemic, um, you know, the, the focus, the, the focus on systemic racism, the economic challenges, are there things that you experienced or that you, you know, as you're going through your career readiness that you feel have strengthened you or are lessons from this? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, if I could really go back to, you know, who I was and, um, you know, the challenges that I went through and, you know, even having to take a gap semester before I transitioned to USG um, and having the guidance, you know, I would go to Ms. Walsh's office and really tell her like, I can't do this. I don't know where to go from here. And she would literally lay down the foundation for me to really get to where I am today. And so knowing how the pandemic has really changed the, you know, it's, it's honestly changed the structure of how nurses really um, progress. And, you know, for those, for those, for those students who, you know, aren't really virtual learners, you know, it's very hard on them. And I've seen, you know, how it is, how, how it's, it's taken a toll of students, you know, students or in my program have become like less engaged or, you know, they're less willing to do certain things. Um, and so just having to, really be a part of ACES and CEO and having to really, really, really like utilize all the skills that they've taught me. Um, and I was talking about the mock interview earlier, you know, having to have that session with Melissa, really polish my resume and how to answer questions during an interview and what to ask, like questions to ask after an interview that really helped me, um, you know, prep. And, and even during my interview with my, um, well, my now boss um, at the IMCU unit, you know, she was able to give me like the key components that really helped me become ready for career readiness. And that's the whole vision of, you know, CEL. And so with everything that's going on and I've, you know, been in the workforce or in the healthcare field, um, starting from MC till now, um, you know, I've definitely seen, you know, the systemic racism that you've talked about. And I've seen, you know, different, just different issues that needs to be improved, you know, in the healthcare field. And so having to take everything that I've learned, you know, from high school to now, you know, I can be able to really critically think, you know, what are the next steps? How can I change the healthcare system? What are ways that I can be a leader for other patients or even other nurses? How can I support other nurses? Um, There's just an array of, of, you know, different key components that I've really learned. And so, you know, I'm very interested to see how I can truly measure, you know, those strengths um, and weaknesses um, towards my next, you know, phase in life and to really see how I can also be of help um, for other nurses who are new graduates or even nurses who have been there for years, how to really change. Because um, like Ms. Wells talked about, is the systemic aspect of things. And so if we can really change, you know, other people's mindset when it comes to, um, you know, to jobs or to how they treat patients that are minorities or that are not like them. Um, you know, ACES, our CEO has, well, has helped, you know, in, in such amazing ways, um, you know, for me to really think back and reflect. Um, definitely there's been a growth and, and hopefully I can be that leader to my unit or even to my community um, as I move forward. Fantastic, thank you so much, Joy. Thank you all. This has been a wonderful conversation. I've learned a lot about career readiness and you all are an amazing team. Uh, thank you for all you do. Thanks for having us, Anne. Thank you. Thank you.